Hello everyone! I'm making this video because I am still seeing people debating and videos being made and questions are being asked about the red car still. So I wanted to point out a few things to you that I found. Let's see what you think. So you're looking at this photograph. It's from the body cam footage from August the 14th. And if I zoom in here, this is where we're supposed to believe that the red car was parked. And if you see these little red lines here, these are supposed to be tire tracks in the gravel and in this little dirt area right here on Betty's property. But if you look, how short must the axle be on this red car if the tire tracks are this close together? Look at that. So you're telling me the axle from wheel to wheel is this short? I mean, even a compact car would have a longer wheelbase than that, right? I don't know. It seems pretty short to me. So let's take a look at some more. So if you look at this one without the red lines drawn on here, you can kind of see a line right here going down in between the Watts home and Betty's house. But to me, that just marks the property line and it's probably just a difference in the rocks that were used on the Watts property versus Betty's property. The homes were built at separate times and I'll show you some more photographs that seem to prove this to me. There's a little bit of a different coloration in the rocks and possibly the size of the rocks. So let's take a look at some more. Okay, on this one I've just marked with this yellow line and black line the property lines between the Watts home and the neighbor's home. I'll zoom in here. And as you can see right here is where they're saying there are tire tracks. But keep this area right here in mind for later when I show you something else. But if you look, oops, let me get rid of this here. Oh well, hang on, I'm, I can't get rid of this marker. Alright, I screwed up. Hang on guys. Okay, I zoomed back out and there are the property lines right there, marked in the yellow and the black. This photo is from the same day, August the 14th, and this is the area they're saying the car was parked, here in this gravel area. But this gravel area is so small, the car would have to be halfway on the Watts lawn. And if you'll notice, right here where this red arrow is pointing, there's like an edging, like a plastic um, landscape edging right there. If a car backed over that, don't you think that would like mess that plastic edging up and fold it down? I'll show you a better picture here in a minute. Okay, this photo is from a few days later. As you can see, people were leaving stuffed animals in memorial of the girls and Shanann. But if you look here at the red arrow, there's the plastic edging I was telling you about. And this area right here is the area they're saying were tire tracks. But it looks like an indention. I don't know if it... And actually, this looks like sand or dirt to me instead of rocks at this point. Um... But I'm thinking maybe this is from this drain pipe and water has bubbled up right here. That's 
a possibility as to what that disturbance is in that area. This is just a wider view of the picture I was just showing. You can see the area over by Betty's house with the round disturbance and take notice of the edging. Wouldn't that, if a car ran over that, wouldn't that be flattened down? And hopefully your screen can pick up on the differences in the rocks here. I think that's the line that people are saying is a tire track. Um, Betty's gravel appears more orange right here versus the line down through here. This is the Watts gravel. I think that's what people are thinking is a line as a tire track. So let me zoom out here. And I don't really think people realize how small this area is. This is not wide enough for a car to be parked on. Even if it was up there in this area with the lawn, the, the landscaping edging. It's, it's just not wide enough. It would have to be over here in the Watts lawn. So wouldn't you clearly see a red car when Chris was walking out of the garage that morning if it was halfway on his lawn? Okay, I'm going to point a couple of other things out to you here. Okay, this is a photo from Google Earth or Google Maps of Betty's house. And as you can see, this is before the Watts home was even built. So let's take a look at her gravel from back then. Look how small it is, you guys. The little area where Betty's gravel is, is extremely small. So if you take that area and what would be the Watts area, it'd be about the same size on the Watts side too. Don't you think that'd be very small? So let me zoom in on the location a little bit more. There you go. Let's see if we can get closer. Okay, it looks like back then she had gravel all the way up to her house. And it looks like it was sliding down. There's an empty patch right there by the gate where the gravel has slid down. So that's probably why they ended up closing that off with some landscape edging and putting in some dirt instead of the gravel. But you'll notice their gravel was here prior to the Watts gravel. So it would st stand a reason that different gravel was used. That's probably why there looks to be a line going down the middle that people are thinking are tire tracks. It's different gravel. Okay. This is just kind of a side-by-side -side of Betty's home before the Watts home was built. How the gravel looked then compared to with the Watts house built and how the gravel looks then. So comparing what it looked like before the Watts home was built to now you can kind of get an idea of actually how small that area is. It's not that wide. It's not wide enough for a full size, even a compact car. You'd have to be halfway on the Watts lawn. And to me, if the car was sitting there halfway on the Watts lawn, it would be in clear view when Chris walks out of the garage to go get his truck to back it into the driveway. Clear view. Especially being red. This photo is just showing how Betty's garage door faces the direction that people are saying that Betty turned to the left. But that just proves the fact that when Betty opened this garage door that morning, her headlights turned on and her headlights would have been 
pointing down that road. That's the little blip of headlights that you see that make it appear that she turned to left. That's an optical illusion. Okay, here's body cam footage facing directly out of Betty's driveway. Now, some people will say she had to be driving a Batmobile to be able to go straight out of her, her driveway and straight down Steeple Rock Drive. But that's not true. You, you don't have to make a 90 degree angle right hand turn to go up that road. You just barely have to turn the wheel just slightly as you can see. You can just go whom down that way. You don't have to keep continuing to go straight in to where that blue truck is sitting. Here it is. Just a nice easy right hand glide. There you go, out of the driveway. Ooh. Not a ch -ch right hand turn with an angle. Nobody does that. You can just glide right out. So this photo demonstrates what it would look like if a red car was sitting in the approximate area of the gravel and a little bit on the grass. When Chris came out of the garage that morning, he would have walked right down here. Red car there. Betty pulls out here. Keep note of this bush right here. Okay, when you watch the video of the car coming down Betty's driveway, you'll notice that at first you only see the headlights. That's all you see at first is the headlights there. You will not see the taillights until she comes out from behind this bush right here. Okay. So this is just another view of that morning from Nate's surveillance camera once the sun had come out just a little bit. And you can see the bush over there, which blocks Betty's driveway just a bit from when she first pulls out. If the red car was sitting right here and it turned its headlights on, you would see the taillights and the headlights all at one time. And it would have pulled out and went that way. But when Betty's over here pulling out, you'll see that at first you see the headlights, no taillights. And here she is pulling out. Now, take a look here. There's her headlights. There's the body, a little bit of her car. But look, it's blocked by this bush right here. You don't see her taillights yet. There's the view of it again without my lines being drawn on it. Do you see what I'm talking about? And how the car almost looks gray and the headlights seem to be giving off a bluish tint. Now when she pulls further down the drive and her brake lights come on, it puts a red hue on the side of her car, making it appear to be a red car. And it could also be that Chris put his brake lights on at the same time and it just kind of illuminates her car as being red. But at this point, when she's still a little bit behind the bush there, the car looks to be a different color right there. See that? Okay, this is just a little bit of a side-by-side -side of before she comes out and when she's first starting to emerge from behind the bush. Here it is before. A moment later, she's starting to come out from behind the bush where the yellow arrow is pointing. You see how it looks like the full car is not in view yet. If she was parked in the grass, the full car would be in view already. Okay, I took this screenshot mere milliseconds after the one you just saw, where her car looks lighter, the headlights are on, and the taillights have not come out from behind the bush yet. This was just 
mere sec, not even full seconds later, I was taking screenshot after screenshot of playing the video of her coming down the drive. And here you can see the headlights are a little bit further down the driveway. And now there's a reddish hue right here. And the back wheel is out from the bush. Now the car looks red. And her headlights are all the way down here. Now unless she's driving a stretch limousine, her car is not this long. That red that you see is like tracers. Like glitching. Because this is so far away for the, from the camera. It just looks glitchy. When you watch it, go watch it in slow motion. Okay, now I want to bring up the shovel man for a moment. This is from body cam footage. It's also on 814. This says 1753. And people are discussing this man walking back here behind the officer's back with carrying something long. He appears to be wearing dark colored shorts. And people were saying that cameramen were not allowed to wear shorts. But I found another photograph. Okay, this is body cam footage, 814. Cameraman, what is the time on this? 1859. So a little bit after we saw the guy walking behind the house, we have a guy similarly dressed in shorts, dark colored shorts. Looks like a green shirt and he looks like he's just about to collapse that camera down and put it over his shoulder the same shoulder that the man behind the house is i mean it's possible they took footage from behind the house i saw some drone footage that the one of the television stations were taking on that day but he is indeed wearing shorts and i had and similar boots it looks like but I had heard numerous people say that television cameramen were not allowed to wear shorts. This is just kind of a side-by-side -side I did of the so-called shovel man versus the cameraman. What do you guys think? I mean, that that's really blurry up there, but it's highly probable, possible, that it could be a cameraman. And as a matter of fact, the shovels, both shovels that Chris had, were located. They're in the Discovery. They were indeed entered in as evidence. They did find them both. The square type shovel head and then the regular kind of pointed shovel head were both found. So these are just some of the photos I have saved in this red car folder here. There's another look at the edging and what was indicated to be a tire track. It looks like a circle to me. And let's see, what else do I have? Uh, here's another view of the cameraman right here. It's also from the 14th. Same guy wearing his shorts. Yeah, so these are just a few things I wanted to point out. See what you guys thought. Oh, look there. There's a, there's a car that could have been parked there that morning. Something about that size. Little Hot Wheels car. It wouldn't even have taken up that much room. There's no way a regular car axle is that s small. There's no way. And do you actually think that they would let someone get away with a crime like this when they full well knew that there was a bright red car sitting there that morning and just pulled away and let them get free and clear of that because they didn't want to spend money on a trial? That's not even, that doesn't even make any sense. It's ridiculous. Come on. Yes, they would have definitely. It has nothing to do with enough money for a trial. That doesn't even make any sense. All right. I just wanted to put this out there because there's still being questions 
out there. More videos are being made. And these are just some of my thoughts. Let me know yours. Thanks for watching.